Windows 11 is here, finally, but it's more of a mixed bag than an amazing update. Now we tried out the public build, not the preview build that has been out for some time now, and here are 5 pros and cons to help you decide whether or not to upgrade. This is Yudullah Abdi, you're watching Canada Technology, and in this video, we're talking about Windows 11. Now let's talk about the good stuff first, shall we? There are a lot of under the hoods and visual improvements in Windows 11 that make it absolutely worth the upgrade. If you've been getting tired of the way Windows looks, especially when compared to other OS's like Mac OS, some Linux distros or even Chrome OS, Windows 11 is going to be a breath of fresh air for you. There are several improvements scattered all across the interface. The file explorer is new, you've got much better looking context menus, the taskbar now centers itself, providing pretty much a dock for your applications, taskbar controls are now bundled in this neat little box, overall it's a pretty significant visual overhaul. Widgets are back now and they're actually useful. You can pin things like the weather, news, stocks and your calendar here and you can access them easily. There are also snap layouts here that help in arranging multiple windows on your desktop easily and now windows will actually remember where you place your windows when connected to an external monitor so that you can get back to work easily. No more of that messy window spanning again. Another big feature coming to Windows is the Android subsystem, meaning Android apps will now run natively on Windows 11 PCs. Now, this does come with some caveats such as the fact that you'll only be able to install apps from the Amazon App Store and not the Google Play Store. And the feature of course is still in beta testing, but you can always sideload the Play Store yourself and have access to it, so that's not that big of a deal. Depending on your PC and hardware configuration, you may or may not see a performance improvement but you should still see a little faster boot times and a more snappy experience overall. Don't have your expectations too high though, Windows 11 is not going to turn your old PC into a supercomputer. For all we know, it might not even support your PC but we'll come to that later. Windows is putting a lot of emphasis on the Microsoft Store this time around, giving it a significant visual overhaul and adding more apps to the store which actually might just make the Microsoft Store useful if you haven't been using it already. If you have been downloading apps from the store, it's now easier than ever to do so. The store works quickly, it doesn't take ages to load search results. Besides, a lot of publishers like Adobe, Amazon and a bunch of third-party developers will now be putting their programs up on the Windows Store, so you should find everything you need there. Windows 11 now gets direct storage which is expected to give you massive performance boosts for just about any program that deals with large amount of data. Case in point, games. Auto HDR is also coming over from the latest Xboxes to the PC, meaning older games will now look better and will be able to take advantage of the entire brightness range of newer monitors. Apart from this, the general performance and stability boost should help games run better. Moving over to what's not so good in the latest iteration of Windows, you might want to look out for these things. If you want to run older games in Windows 11, you might run into performance issues or these programs might not run at all. Depending upon where you source them, you can run into compatibility issues, crashes or programs straight up not launching. There are still a lot of visual bugs and glitches scattered throughout the OS. The most notable ones are in the taskbar. If you get a notification, your taskbar icons will change position to overlap with what's already on there causing this weird looking artifact. Context menus sometimes have additional scroll space to them, not to mention the oversimplification means they might get in your way at times. Overall, don't be too surprised if you run into a few glitches here and there. Now this is a big one. There's quite a lot of functionality missing from the taskbar, especially when it comes to customization and positioning. If you're one of those people who like their taskbar on the sides or the top, like I do, well, that option is gone now. There are registry hacks and third-party applications to do this, but they break just about every taskbar animation that's been added. Apart from this, if you're used to dragging and dropping files to taskbar icons, that feature is now gone too. You can no longer add events to your calendar straight from the taskbar and the time and taskbar icons are now only displayed on the main display. A big headache for multi-display users. Another thing is that the taskbar right-click menu or the quick access menu can now only be invoked by right-clicking the start button and not anywhere else on the taskbar. You can still access it by pressing the Windows key and X key combination but if you're used to right-clicking, it's a little bit of aiming to do now. The timeline feature from Windows 10 has been quietly removed. Now, granted this wasn't a very popular feature, but it was still useful to the small percentage of people who actually used it. Apart from that, Cortana is also no longer baked into Windows. If you still want Microsoft's half-baked attempt at a virtual assistant for whatever reason, you're going to have downloaded from the Microsoft Store and use it just like any other app. 
Possibly the biggest drawback about Windows 11 is that not everybody will be able to run it. While Windows 10 was easily upgradable from prior Windows versions, Windows 11 has a specific set of requirements that your PC's hardware needs to meet. We've already covered this in an article on our website but for a quick rundown, you need a TPM or Trusted Platform Module 2.0 compatible CPU to be able to run Windows. Most modern PCs should be able to support this requirement but if you've got something rather old, you might as well be looking at a new PC purchase altogether. Additionally, you must be running Windows 10 version 2 or later to upgrade. Windows 10 users can get the PC Health Checker app from Microsoft to see if their PCs would be compatible with Windows 11 and if yours aren't, there's not a lot you can do apart from getting a new CPU. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, give this video a like and tell us in the comments below if you want to see more content related to Windows 11. If you want to know more about tech, visit our website Candidate Technology, follow us on social media, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and we'll see you in the next video.